So pneumonia is classified into different types. And the first, the most important, and the subject of most of this talk today is community-acquired pneumonia. And that is what it says in its name. It's a pneumonia that is acquired when you're living at home and not in hospital or anything else. So it's the normal standard pneumonia that you pick up in your everyday life. There's a subcategory of community-acquired pneumonia called healthcare associated pneumonia, which has been defined recently in America, but probably is not relevant in Europe. And I'm not going to discuss that in any more detail today. That is a pneumonia that occurs in people who are in long-term care facilities, nursing homes, etc. But in fact, in Europe, it's probably not that much different to normal community-acquired pneumonia. And therefore, we, we group it with community-acquired pneumonia. The other important forms of pneumonia are hospital-acquired, which, as it says, is a pneumonia that you develop when you're in hospital. So you're admitted to hospital for another reason, say you're having an operation, and then after the operation you develop a pneumonia. That would be a hospital-acquired pneumonia. It's also those patients who've been in hospital recently and then come back in with a pneumonia because the organisms that are causing that pneumonia have probably been acquired whilst they're in hospital previously, they are also defined as hospital-acquired pneumonia. A third form of pneumonia is ventilator-acquired. That's basically a subtype of hospital-acquired pneumonia, but it means that this is pneumonia in patients who are on the intensive care unit being ventilated with an endotracheal tube inserted. And they are susceptible to pneumonia because the ET tube, the endotracheal tube, bypasses quite a lot of the normal immune mechanisms for pre preventing infection. And the last category is immunocompromised host. These are patients who have a very severe defect of their immune system, and that allows a range of unusual organisms, bacteria, viruses, and fungi, to cause the pneumonia. So the, the, the chance of having a, uh, a pneumonia to an unusual organism is much higher in these patients. But we're talking about patients who have severe immunocompromised state. So those who've had chemotherapy for cancer, those with HIV infection with poor CD4 counts, those who had transplantation of their marrow or of a kidney or their lung, etc. So patients really with very severe immune defects. So who gets pneumonia? Well, there's an easy answer to that question. That is absolutely everybody could get pneumonia. It's not uncommon in young people. But it is particularly common in two age groups, the very young, the under fives, and as I mentioned before, it's the commonest cause of death across the developing world in the under fives, and the elderly. And there's an almost exponential increase in the chance of developing pneumonia after the age of 65. So it ends up that the chance of developing pneumonia in somebody who's very old, over 85, is about 5% a year. The risk factors for pneumonia also, as well as age, include previous influenza or other viral infections because, as I mentioned in the influenza lecture, a viral infection of the respiratory tract affects the immune response to bacteria and allows bacterial infection to develop as a consequence of the viral infection. So secondary bacterial pneumonias after influenza are very common and that's the major way by which death is caused during the pandemics or has been in the past. For example, the post-World War I pandemic, which killed 20 million people, most people died of pneumococcal and staphylococcus uh, pneumonia after having the influenza virus infection. Other people who are more susceptible to pneumonia are, are alcoholics uh, or people with liver cirrhosis because that affects the ability of the immune system to fight bacteria. Smokers that allows the bacteria to establish infection in the lungs more readily. Actually, having had one episode of pneumonia makes you two or three times more likely to have another episode. It marks you out as somebody susceptible to pneumonia. And then patients with chronic disease, chronic lung disease, COPD, for example, chronic neurological disease, dementia, previous stroke, etc., any renal impairment or cardiac failure. These are all reasons why you are, all, these all increase the chance of getting community acquired pneumonia. Now, if you have hospital-acquired pneumonia, you need to be in hospital. So if you're hospitalized for, one, for an, a reason, then you're at risk of hospital-acquired pneumonia. And if you're ventilated, then you're at risk of ventilator-acquired pneumonia. And the risk of that is about 1% per day that you are ventilated. And then, of course, the patients who have immunosuppressed for their treatment of their cancer or because they've had a lung transplantation, etc., those will be at risk of, immunos of pneumonia of the immunosuppressed patient. You just completed your first video of the world's best medical exam preparation. 
Lecturio brings the knowledge of worldwide leading medical experts and teaching award winners to your PC, tablet, or smartphone. Prepare yourself and check your progress with thousands of quiz questions, customized to US MLE standards. And the very best, you can get in touch with our medical experts personally. Visit Lecturio.com now and continue with the most inspiring medical education around the globe, anytime, anywhere.